San Diego businesses lose their battle over indoor operations, but the war is not over yet. They had COVID-19 with barely any symptoms, but now months later, they can barely get out of bed. How Facebook is using AI to project coronavirus spread. We're taking you deep below the sea for an up-close look at what's lurking on the ocean floor just off our coast. Deaf and legally blind, how Kevin Tong is thriving with the challenge of feeding 9,000 Marines a day. News 8 starts right now. A San Diego judge has ruled against local restaurants and gyms seeking an order to allow them to reopen indoor business. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. Even after today's decision, the lawsuit is far from over. As News 8's David Goffertson reports, the arguments made by the businesses could end up in higher courts. They're seeking to eliminate this whole blueprint altogether. It's a class action lawsuit aimed at allowing restaurants and gyms in San Diego County to resume indoor operations during the pandemic. The businesses argued in court the governor's pandemic blueprint that placed them in the most restrictive purple tier was unconstitutional and arbitrary. They made a motion for a temporary restraining order to allow them to reopen indoors while the lawsuit proceeded through the courts. But on Monday, Superior Court Judge Kenneth Medell denied the TRO, citing the recent acceleration of the pandemic. Quote, the impact on public health of dismantling a portion of the state's COVID-19 response designed to reduce community spread outweighs the economic harm to plaintiffs. But the lawsuit will continue on. The plaintiffs are expected to make a more detailed motion in the future for a preliminary injunction. I would not expect that the restaurants and gyms uh, would drop this lawsuit just because they lost at the temporary restraining order level. Attorney Dan Eaton is not involved in the case, but he says the tone of the judge's order is clear. The court's order uh, shows a great deal of skepticism toward the plaintiff's arguments. So uh, they had an uphill battle for this temporary restraining order, and now the court having committed its preliminary thoughts in writing, uh, they will continue to have an uphill battle, both at the preliminary injunction phase and ultimately uh, in any disposition on the merits of this case. The plaintiffs include two local restaurants and two local gyms, but if they win the case, it likely will apply to all similar businesses in the county. You could expect other restaurants and gyms to say that they are entitled to the same kind of relief. The attorney for the businesses declined to comment on the ruling today. All the parties will be back in court next week to discuss a schedule for a possible preliminary injunction hearing. Carlo? And David, how long could this case go on? We have the possibility now of a vaccine, even three, coming in the next month or so. Right, the pandemic could end before the lawsuit ends. And these businesses are already hit hard by, uh, you know, the pandemic. And it just remains to be seen how much money they have to continue this fight. You know, they're fighting the government. Cases can be appealed up and down. So uh, it could take years and we'll just have to wait and see how long it goes. See how it plays out. David Gofferson reporting live. Thanks, David. Carlsbad police are investigating the suspicious death of a woman whose body was found on a hiking trail. The body was discovered by hikers late this morning on Hosp Grove Trail East. That's near the 2600 block of Monroe Street. Police described the victim as a white woman in her 60s. They say there was blood on the woman's head and on the ground. Anyone with information should call Carlsbad Police. New local COVID cases continue to trend in the wrong direction. County health officials today reported the second highest single day total yet. 1167 cases. That's about 5% of the more than 22,000 tests. There were 28 new hospitalizations and hospitals countywide are at more than 70% capacity. No new deaths were reported, but that's common on Mondays and keeps that total at 968. Governor Gavin Newsom held the state's coronavirus update virtually today as he and his family quarantined following a possible exposure to COVID-19. So far, they have tested negative. This comes as Newsom says the state is seeing an unprecedented rise in new cases, including among one particular age group.
It's younger than 80, uh, than 50 years old. It's the 18 to 49 age cohort that's now representing 60% of all of our new cases. Newsom also touched on vaccine distribution efforts, noting that doses will be prioritized for healthcare workers and first responders. Facebook is combining artificial intelligence with coronavirus data to forecast how much COVID-19 cases will rise. News 8's Brandon Lewis shows us how the information is being gathered and the outlook for San Diego County. Now, Carlo and Barbara Lee, certainly state officials look at this data regularly and do their own projection models. Facebook is taking this two week window to give a short range estimate of what they think we'll see in the next few days. Facebook's data for good map uses artificial intelligence to project how much coronavirus will spread in San Diego. That's about 12,000 cases an 18% spike over the next two weeks. It's really just a bunch of math, automated math, that's using previous caseload to predict future caseload. And then you use that information with a bunch of other variables to try to look forward. The system analyzes multiple factors like confirmed cases, doctor visits, weather, and anonymous user GPS data to see if people are traveling or staying at home. It doesn't look at user posts. What we're trying to do is bring all the information that people choose to share with Facebook to the to the bear and uh, make it publicly available in many cases so that public health systems, academics and international institutions can use these non-traditional sources, hopefully to get ahead of cases. California uses multiple models to make a composite like this one that shows how mandates may affect hospitalizations. The top line here is without a stay at home order. The middle is with the new restrictions and the bottom is with a strict three month shelter in place. We can bring this curve down. We can flatten it. We can get it to a point where our healthcare system is able to do what it's intended to do, which is take care of the sick in in a high quality and complete way. California estimates about 12% of these cases will go to the hospital, but it's what's on the horizon that could be more concerning. The Facebook models don't fully account for Thanksgiving since it takes about 14 days for symptoms to show. Without an intervention, we see these rapid rises and yes, it comes down, but after a really important toll on all of Californians that without interventions, we see high case rates, high impact on our hospitals. We have a link to Facebook's dashboard as well as the one in use by the state of California on our website. Just go to cbs and click on the help button. Carlo and Barbara Lee. All right, Brandon, thank you. Despite pleas and warnings against it, many Americans are traveling for the Thanksgiving holiday. This comes as new COVID cases continue to rise both locally and across the nation. Sunday was the busiest day at U.S. airports since the pandemic began. Most, like San Diego International, have added extra precautions in an effort to keep travelers as safe as possible. Despite those measures, though, one traveler tells us she is not letting her guard down. It was a little scary, but a little anxious, but just getting in contact with somebody that could be positive, that's the main concern. AAA estimates up to 50 million Americans will travel for Thanksgiving. That is down from last year. And not as many people are expected to be out driving this week, but the rules of the road still apply. CHP will be out in full force for a maximum enforcement period. It starts at 6 Wednesday night, goes through 11.59 p.m. Sunday. Officers will be looking for impaired or unsafe drivers, and they remind everyone to buckle up. News of a third promising vaccine is bringing more hope tonight that the end of the pandemic could be in sight. But word of the latest vaccine comes as COVID-19 infections continue to surge nationwide. As Nancy Chen reports, the approaching holiday could also pose a threat. New York City is asking Thanksgiving travelers to reconsider. Please don't travel. Please change your plans if you've made them. A similar message in Massachusetts. You can't afford to do Thanksgiving and the holidays the same way we've done it in years past. But pandemic weary Americans are on the move. Just over 3 million were screened at TSA checkpoints this weekend and nearly 48 million are expected to drive somewhere for the holiday. Naturally, there's a little bit of nervousness that comes with traveling, but mostly I think I'm fine. All this as COVID-19 infections soar to an all time high, averaging more than 170,000 per day. Health officials are concerned this week's gatherings will intensify the surge. It's a natural reaction to say, now, wait a minute. I know these people, you know, their friends, they're coming in. 
you tend to almost intuitively and instinctively let you, let your guard down. New York State has seen 36,000 new COVID cases in the last week. And as the holiday approaches, people are facing long lines at testing locations. Lines are even longer in Colorado and in Jacksonville, Florida, where David Robinson hoped for reassurance before Thanksgiving. We have some older uh, people that uh, in the family that we want to be protecting at this time of the year. In North Dakota, help arrived for overwhelmed hospitals. Nurses from the U.S. Air Force will assist the state through its deadliest month since the start of the pandemic. Nancy Chen, CBS News, New York. And again, despite busier airports, the number of people flying is down by about half compared to last year. Coming up, the incoming Biden administration gets the green light to begin the transition process. Plus, we're learning who's nominated for cabinet posts in the Biden White House. We had some stubborn coastal clouds for today and also daytime highs, a lot of 60s across the board. We were a little below seasonal as well. How long will it stick around? All those details ahead. And uncharted territory just off our coast and Earth 8 from 6,000 feet below.